Yes! What is up, everyone? All we are saying is give PB a chance. We have fun here. However, this is a tough time of the year, you know, when the European season comes to an end and everything feels super chaotic, especially in the manager department, in terms of who's gonna get sacked and hi Stefano Pioli, or get surprisingly hired, and I still can't believe Vincent Company is going to Bayern. I mean, you have to think they asked his former coach Pep Guardiola if he would be a good fit, and clearly Pep said yes which makes me wish that Pep would tell people that I would be a good coach for them because I can't make content forever, or can I? <laughs> Could you imagine me all looking like a raisin with white hair or no hair? Still, yes, what is up everyone? Yeah, I guess I could see myself still doing that. I'd be like Crazy George from the San Jose Earthquakes. And then you mix in all this club drama and a Champions League final with the international tournaments that are on the cusp of beginning. And of course, all of you want previews for these tournaments because my previews are awesome. And then you throw in my beloved domestic leagues, MLS, NWSL, and USL who are in full swing right now. And my head is spinning. And so is my chair. So many games, so little time, but let's be honest. I love every minute of it. Anyway, let's get to some questions, topics, whatever. Let's talk some shop. And I'll go first because it's my channel, so I can do what I want. I can do what I want. It's my channel, and I can do what I want. And then the best community on YouTube can chime in in the comments. Cool? Cool. However, I'm gonna make this a bit multiple choice for you, and here are your three choices for each. Positive, negative, and neutral. And then we'll see where it goes. Maybe it'll make sense, maybe it won't. I'm trying to do something a little creative. So get off my back. Question number one, Eric Ten Hag. Should he stay at Manchester United? Does he deserve it? Of course! And maybe I have recency bias because we just beat the mighty Manchester City in their bottomless pit of money in the FA Cup final two to one, but that should matter because it is Eric Ten Hag's second trophy in two years and this win also qualifies us to play in the Europa League next season. And two teenagers, both 19, Kabi Menu and Alejandro Garnacho, who are two players that he brought along and then entrusted in the biggest game of the season, both scored. So he's ticking some boxes, i.e. winning trophies and playing the kids, knocking Liverpool out of the FA Cup, qualifying for Europe by beating our noisy neighbors, got third in the league the season before. Get the f out of here, man. I don't give a rat's ass about last season. This season, we were eighth, which is our lowest finish in the league table since 1990, okay? We gave up more goals than we scored, and we don't have a clear identity of how we should play. Also, let's look at Ten Hag signing, shall we? Anthony for 95 million euros. Dude scored one goal in the Premier League this season. One! Asimiro for 75 million. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that guy was pretty good last season, but this season, abysmal. Mason Mount for 65 million this past summer, one goal and one assist in 20 games, unacceptable. 21-year-old Danish striker Rasmus Hoyland. Okay, fine, he scored 10 league goals in 30 games. Better than his nine and 32 in Serie A the season before with Atalanta, but is he worth the 74 million that we paid for him? And don't get me started about the guy you froze out of the team, Jaden Sancho, who is now starting for Borussia Dortmund in a Champions League final. Listen. We might not have beaten you this season in all competitions, which probably, most likely, significantly hurt us in trying to win the league in Jurgen Klopp's last season, but your problem is in hiring a bald Dutch manager. We would never do that. <laughs> Ever. It just doesn't work. Question number two, Xavi. Is he a good manager or nah? We don't mind him. That's because we didn't beat you this season, all right? We had the lead in two of the three games, and we lost all three. Also, just for the record, damn you, Jude Bellingham. Okay, calm down, calma. It was always gonna be difficult to repeat as league champion when our rivals are signing world-class players and we had injuries to key players. And of course, it's well documented how handcuffed financially the club is. So for example, we had to go and get two Joao's on loan. One, a defender that doesn't like to defend, and the other, a striker who doesn't always seem that interested in playing. Financially handcuffed, then explain to me how we could then pay 40 million euros for a 19-year-old Brazilian this season, Vitor Roque, and why we would do that, 
when he has no experience playing in Europe, and then what? Expect him to be the next Vinicius Jr. right away? It looked like Xavi had no interest in playing this guy, so did he approve this signing? And if not, can we sack the board instead? These guys are a bunch of f***ing idiots! Ooh, this is interesting. I feel like we're feeling the same way here because it's not like Xavi didn't trust young players. He's done a great job of bringing along 16-year-old Lamine Yamal and 17-year-old Paul Kabarsi who both have extremely bright futures with the club. You're like that Spider-Man pointing at the Spider-Man meme. Maybe our clubs are too, you know? Since we both are two of the biggest clubs in the world where winning everything all the time is expected, but injuries limited our ability to reach our potential this season along with some big name signings not really working out however the silver lining is that we've identified some kids who are going to be our stars for many many years oh man it's so nice to know we're not alone oh okay pipe down you wanker we're levels above you you are hiring managers to try and play like us even though you don't have the players to do it make that make sense wait 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 remind me did you win a trophy this season? Question number three, Thibaut Courtois. Good and healthy enough to start the Champions League final for Real Madrid, but not good and healthy enough to make Belgium's roster for the Euros. What? Look at our group. Slovakia, Romania, and Ukraine. We don't need him to win it. Are you f***ing insane? It feels like we're at the very end of this golden generation. So let's win a tournament already, not just our group. And we're not gonna do that without one of the best goalkeepers in the world! We're actually thrilled he's gonna get some extra rest this summer because that's gonna help us win more trophies. Because that's what we do! Shut the f up! This 38 year old manager of ours, Domenico Tedesco, is putting his ego ahead of what's best for the team. Okay, let's give some context for everybody. I think that's important. So the manager and Courtois had a falling out last year when Courtois reportedly walked out of the squad when he was not named captain following Eden Hazard's retirement, citing that he didn't feel respected by the team and or the coaching staff, though Courtois contends that he left only due to a knee injury and then both made comments, the coach and Courtois, publicly about the situation which Courtois thought was unprofessional and I feel like that's what's getting a little sticky between them, you know? Whatever, the past is the past. Be professional in this moment. Make amends, get on with it, and get your best players on the field. <laughs> What just happened? Anyway, drop your thoughts in the comments, hit like and subscribe of course, and be on the lookout for some previews and more Last Man Standing episodes. We have two left before TST starts next week. Also, I love you guys.